Hi, this is Chong Kim, and today we're going to learn how to use Vimdiff to resolve Git merge conflicts. We're in this directory under the feature branch, and we've made some changes to the file, and we're ready to merge. We merge from uh, master, and we see that there's a conflict. So let's take a look at that file. We see that it has these markers and we need to go into the file and uh, modify this manually or you could use a merge tool. Uh, you can specify it this way, you can specify uh, gvimdiff or you can use vimdiff or you can set up a you can set up the configuration so you can say git config global merge tool gvimdiff. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we see a, a, a three way merge. We have the working file and on the left, you see the local file. The local file is the changes that we've made. On the right side, we have the changes that we're trying to merge into our code. Uh, this is from master. If we had just these two pieces of information, that would only be a two-way merge. But you need to have uh, the base, which is the file before any of these changes occurred. So you can see what the changes actually were, uh, that were actually made uh, for each of these. All right. And it'll help a lot when we uh, try to figure out what's going on. So we're here in the working copy and the working copy has um, basically both versions of the file. And so it makes the, um, so it makes the diff very, um, very big. So you can see these big open spaces. So what I like to do is turn this off. <clears throat> so when you turn it off, it becomes a little bit more obvious what is going on. At the top here, you can see that there was nothing here before and I added the header. On the master, footer was added. So it becomes clear that we need to add uh, both of these. So let's go in here and turn this back on. You can turn it on by saying diff t for diff this. And let's just take the whole um, local. So you can specify it this way, or you could just shorten it to lo, or you can say two because these buffers are, are numbered. This one, this is one, two, three, and four. So if I do diff get two, I get this part. It may help if you do diff update to update the the diff. Anytime you make any changes, it's good. It's a good idea to do a a diff update. So we see that we need to add the footer. So let's go in and grab the footer and we'll put it right here. Okay, and then remember to do the diff update. All right, so if we, another good thing to know is um, right bracket C. If you do right bracket C, it'll go to the first hunk, and if you do right bracket C again, you go to the next one. And the left bracket C, you go to the previous. So you can go jump from one to the other. So we're done with uh, this part. Now we're taking a look at the print file function. And it's a little bit um, difficult to see what's going on here. Um, so here's the base. And um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. So if you just want to see 
what changes were made, uh, what changes we made. We could just turn this off and turn this off. And you can see here that uh, that the header was added and the line number is not there anymore. So uh, just take this out and put this in. The other thing that happened was we added this with index. So you can see that the line number has been, um, been moved over here. Okay, so that's what we did. So let's see what the master did. So let's turn this off and let's go to the remote, uh, which is the master, and uh, turn this on. Oops, uh, diff T is to turn it on. Okay, so we, we can see here that really there the, the change is actually nothing because what we did was just a white space change. Uh, we just got rid of the spaces. So there's, there's really nothing that happened here. So we can just totally disregard this because uh, in our version, we got rid of this anyway. So let's go back and turn everything back on. So diff T and diff T, okay. So we can just, uh, from this section, we can just accept everything from the local copy, uh, our changes. Okay, so do a diff update. All right, so now let's take a look at the next chunk, which is right here. And this is pretty obvious. Uh, there was nothing there before and a footer was added. So let's just, um, so we, uh, so that one is not a problem. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so in this one, uh, one thing that may be a problem is the coloring because it's using the, the comment coloring and the comment coloring is this, uh, this gray and it doesn't look very good uh, here. So one thing that you can do is just change the highlighting. So if you do uh, diff, there's diff add, diff change, uh, diff delete and diff text. So this one is actually diff text. And you can see that it has a uh, red background and uh, right now it's ignoring the, the foreground color because it's using the, um, the font of the, uh, the syntax highlighting. So let's just, um, so we can just set that to a different color. Um, Actually, we can either set the foreground or the, let's just change the foreground. Oh, actually, if we change the foreground, then it'll always be that color. So we lose the syntax highlighting. So let's just, for now, um, it's red, but let's turn it to dark red. So highlight, diff text. Uh, we using uh, the GUI version, so we say GUI, uh, VG. Otherwise, you would use uh, uh, C term uh, VG uh, if you were using the console. So you would say GUI VG and let's say dark red. Okay, now that's a little bit more readable. Okay, so it's uh, we see that there are text changes, but um, let's take a look so let's just turn this one off and uh, so what are the changes that were made uh, okay so let's just turn this one off uh, okay so well first let's see what changes we made turn that off and we can see here that uh, at the end uh, we added this more comments so there was this addition of text. So let's just turn this one off, diff O, and go back here and turn this one on. And we see that basically 
there are white space changes over here and uh, there's this change. Let me just move this around here. And I see, this is uh, not very obvious, but um, just looking at this, uh, we see that this word uh, has been removed. So let's just um, turn this one back on and turn this one back on. And let's just take one of these. Okay. And so I, I took the first one, which is uh, the more comment. And I'm going to apply the second one. And the second one, we saw that there was the first, uh, first there was the indentation. And this, I'm going to turn this one off because we had just applied this. And uh, what else do we need to do with this? Um, oh yes, the this word was taken out. Let's see, do a diff update. Um, okay, so that looks good. And let's just turn this one off and just compare. And we see that the difference between uh, this one and this is that I added more comments and I kept the formatting. Okay. So if we didn't, if we weren't able to turn these diffs uh, on and off, it becomes very difficult. Um, so. And you can compare uh, between two different files, uh, either uh, and comparing it to the base, and just use the working copy to um, to gather the necessary changes that you need from uh, where you need. So that's pretty much it. Um, and after you're done, okay, you're ready to. Um, you, you are ready to commit this. But let's say, for example, that um, you've made a mistake. Uh, you can do a git uh, reset hard, and that will bring everything back to the way it was, and you're able to do a git merge. Because once you do a git merge, a uh, git merge tool, uh, then you're not able to run it again. Because it think because uh, all the all the um, all the files that were conflicted have been resolved. So uh, if you mess up, then just do a, a git reset hard and start over. So this has been uh, Vimdiff uh, on how to resolve uh, git conflicts.